Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at a question from J.R. Clifton. And he has what appears at first glance to be a simple question. He says, I recently read an article on NVIS antennas. Now, NVIS is Near Vertical Incidence Skywave Propagation. And that's where you shoot a signal straight up. And the way you do that is with a fairly low antenna that will tend to shoot straight up. And then that hits the ionosphere kind of in a cone and will come down to stations up to two or 300 miles away. It's a very good technique for talking to somebody reliably on 80 or 40 meters, depending on the time of day. He says, the impedance, this is what he read. The impedance of a half-wave dipole in free space is about 70 ohms. Uh, the first thing that I do when I react to that is I don't know anybody who lives in free space. So, um, it, it, <laughs> I don't know why we keep talking about free space numbers because they're completely irrelevant to anything on Earth. Even the space shuttle, they're working against that great big giant hunk of metal. Okay, so they're not in free space either. As it is lowered, the impedance drops. When it gets to 7 to 8 feet high, the impedance is down to about 12 ohms. And what JR um, asks is, can you explain why the impedance of an antenna changes with the height? Why doesn't it stay the same regardless of the height? Okay, impedance of an antenna. First of all, let's talk about what it is. It's the RMS voltage divided by the RMS current at any particular point along the antenna. It will vary wildly. We usually um, traditionally have picked the center of the antenna to feed it because that's where the impedance is lowest. Uh, again, RMS, RF, this is RF voltage, RMS, root mean square, uh, voltage divided by the root mean square current. Now, as you go out toward the uh, ends of the antennas, the RMS current goes down, the RMS voltage goes up, so the impedance goes up to where, in th theory, when you get to the antenna, it's uh, uh, infinite. It's not in real practice, of course. It doesn't work out that way in real practice. But what happens is that the impedance can get quite high. And people have found that a good way to feed a dipole on the end is with a 49 to 1 ballon, uh, which gives you a conversion from 50 ohms to 2,450, which is not too bad, okay? And you can feed it there very successfully, and a number of people do. You can also feed an, an antenna off-center, an off-center fed dipole. Those really had a vogue about 10 years ago. And then there's the traditional feed it in the middle. Now, beside defining this, we need to talk a little bit about what affects that impedance. And the answer it comes from the first rule of antennas, which is that everything affects everything. There's no such thing as an antenna in free space, so um, you have to take into account ground reflections. So actually, actually, and this is true, some of the radiation from that antenna is going to go down, hit the ground, come right back up, and be received by the antenna and interact with the what's going on in that antenna anyway. And that will change the spot impedance at various places along that. And so clearly, how far you are away from ground is going to affect that. So uh, there is a chart in the 23rd uh, edition of the Amateur Radio Antenna book. And I apologize for not using the most recent. I don't have it. And it's kind of expensive, so the 23rd does just fine. But I have a diagram here, and I want to take a look at this diagram. This chart is in the 23rd edition of the Amateur Radio Handbook. This right here is the 
height of the horizontal half wave in wavelengths. This is very important. It's in wavelengths. Okay, so let's take an 80 meter antenna that we might use for something like this. So, um, 80 meters. So a half wave would be 40 meters, uh, which would be about 132 feet. Now, the best height for a dipole this size would be one half of the wavelength, wavelength being represented by the Greek letter lambda. Okay, and at that point right here, we're looking, might as well highlight this curve because there's several curves on here. Real ground, let's just do real ground. Okay, this is the horizontal antenna. Okay, height above ground in wavelengths. So this right here at 132 feet up in the air, right there. Indeed, the wave, the impedance is 70 ohms. Now, if you go down in wavelength here to a much more reasonable, it's hard to get it up 132 feet. Here at a much more reasonable wavelength, it actually goes up. See how that goes up as the antenna comes down? And then it starts coming down right here. Now, 50 ohms, which is what we usually use for these things, is for a much lower antenna. Now, when you are doing NVIS, you want about an eighth of a wavelength. One eight lambda, which would be 10 meters equals approximately 33 feet. Okay, up in the air. This is very achievable. This is very achievable. Okay, and that would give you at uh, a eighth of a wavelength, which is somewhere around here, should give you uh, a fairly low impedance, but actually in practice, that impedance is going to be here at about 45 ohms. Now, this diagram assumes that you have nothing else around you. You have the poles that hold up your antenna, and there's not even a blade of grass within a half a mile. So this is very, very, very idealized. The key point that you can take out of this, and this is really the only key point you can take out of this, is that the height of the antenna affects the input impedance. Okay? The height of the antenna affects the input impedance. So to reiterate a couple key points, no one lives in free space, so any kind of calculations that involve a free space antenna are entertaining but irrelevant to real life. Let's talk about an antenna over real ground. Um, the impedance of the antenna, remember, is the ratio between the RMS, RF voltage, not wiggling voltages, but the constant RF voltage, such as would be measured by a meter, the RMS, root mean square, voltage, uh, divided by the RMS current. Rarely is that a pure resistance. The thing is that there is almost always some sort of reactance in the antenna. Now what that means is that the phase of the antenna now what that means is that the phase of the current and the phase of the voltage are going to be different. Usually uh, we use the phase of the voltage as being zero and use that as the reference point which means the current will be out of phase. So in building a transmatch for this thing or using an antenna tuner we need something that handles reactive loads as well as uh, resistive loads. So these numbers here show resistive. That's only part of the story. Okay, the feed point impedance is affected by the environment, especially ground, large metal objects, and so on. Each antenna installation will be different. 
If you make two antennas in there precisely the same as each other, down to the last little detail, and you mount them in two different locations, they will behave differently. So we need to keep that in mind. Okay, and note that, of course, with 80 meters, you're not going to find any single dipole that's going to cover the entire band. So you're going to need to pick the part of the band that you work on. For NVIS, usually, what you will be wanting to pick is the upper part of the band where you will be doing voice communications. Now, uh, of course, for FT8, you, you want the other end of the band. Okay, so I hope that answers your question about what's going on here. This is an example of how the first rule of antennas is that everything affects everything. And your input impedance is part of that. Now, of course, if you have good coax, we're at HF, so losses in coax are small. You can tune with your antenna tuner, often with the tuner in your rig, that's already in your rig, you can tune up that antenna and operate just fine. Now some people are only able to get an 80 meter antenna 30 feet in the air. For me that'd be a real accomplishment because I have very few points on my property that are high. We did put up one 30 foot mast uh, using Stephen Klein's uh, measurements. I did a, a YouTube on that uh, oh, a few weeks ago. So there you go, something to play with. Even if your antenna is low, it does not mean that it does not radiate something down near the horizon. It will radiate something. You'd be amazed at the kind of distances you can get with these antennas. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, please uh, click like and subscribe and look for ways that you can uh, help support the channel financially. And until we next meet, 73.